What's up ladies and gentlemen, Zoop here, and today I have a special review for you. The Naval Institute Press was kind enough to send me a copy of the graphic novelization of James D. Hornfisher's Last Stand of the Ten Can Sailors. Hornfisher's novel focuses on the epic battle off Samar in which Taffy 3 comprised of destroyers, destroyer escorts, and escort carriers squared off against Japan's center force which comprised of the mighty Yamato several other battleships, heavy cruisers, and destroyers. A true David versus Goliath story, and the U.S. Navy's finest moment, in my opinion. Sadly, Hornfisher passed away last year after a battle with cancer and did not see the release of the graphic novel, which bears his name. He and his legacy live on through this and the works he created, though, which are among the finest accounts of World War II naval history anyone has to offer. Adapted by Vietnam veteran Doug Murray, the writer behind Marvel's comic, The Nom, and illustrated by Steven Sanders, the graphic novel is 200 pages long. The hardbound book itself is fairly thin, but pages are of good quality and the printing is beautiful. The graphic novel starts off with an infograph showing silhouettes of the Center Force's 23 ships and Taffy 3's 13. Yamato herself displaced more than all of Taffy 3 combined. After a few pages of scene setting, the graphic novel gets right into the action and never lets up until the end. Doug Murray and Hornfisher, who I assume heavily assisted, had a Herculean task. The novel, Last Stand of the Tin Can Sealers, is over 430 pages long. Condensing that down into a mere 200 pages with minimal dialogue must have caused some very long nights of storyboarding. This is where the compromises take place, and that's one of the points I'll focus on in this review. I can't say enough about the illustrations. They are very clean and allow the reader to understand what's going on with minimal effort. Many illustrators like to cram a frame full of so much detail that the main point gets lost. That's not the case here. More importantly, all the ships and planes have been accurately illustrated as well, which is important for a historical adaptation. This also aids readers who might not be as familiar with the ships in naval history. Being able to see what the book described is a huge bonus. That leads me to a huge takeaway and recommendation regarding the graphic novel. Obviously, I recommend it to everyone, but it serves two distinct purposes. For those that have read the novel, the graphic novel serves as more of a companion. It's a reference that allows you to understand better what's happening in the book. In fact, in future editions, I would love to see it treated as such, with the pages in the graphic novel providing prompts to the pages in the book they refer to. For the history buffs out there, that's why I recommend this. It's the closest we have to a movie of these events, and for those of you that might not have as strong of an imagination, it allows you to better understand what you're reading. For the casual history buffs out there without the patience for a 420-page epic novel, this is a wonderful entry into World War II history and a key naval battle in U.S. naval history. You won't get quite the depth that the novel provides, but it's an excellent introduction. That may be the only issue I have with the graphic novel. At 200 pages, I understand sacrifices had to be made, but I feel the ending could have used a little more refinement. Again, maybe in future editions. The fate of Ernest Evans of the USS Johnston was never resolved in the graphic novel, which I feel was the largest omission. At the end, I'd love to have seen a few pages focusing on the Alkalades Taffy 3 won, as well as awards individual sailors and officers won, like Evans' Medal of Honor. That would be a far more impactful ending to the graphic novel, and provide some closure. Again, I feel future editions could easily have a few more pages added to represent this. For you parents out there wanting to get your teenagers into history, this is an excellent avenue as well. I must warn you, though, that the book does not shy away from the carnage steel causes upon flesh, nor does the graphic novel. It is graphically depicted in some instances, so those of you with more sensitive children should keep that in mind. The graphic novel is definitely a hard R rating. Overall, The Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailors is a quick but enjoyable read. It'll take most readers a short 30 minutes to get through it. While short on words and talk, it's heavy on action and represents a wonderful depiction of the main events of the battle and some of the aftermath. I can't recommend this enough. It serves as a fitting tribute to James D. Hornfisher as well. His passing has left an enormous hole in the military history circles, and I'd love to see several more of his novels adapted in this manner. The first printing of Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailor sold out almost immediately, and it's now in its second printing. Be sure to snag a copy as quickly as you can.
Everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this quick review. I'll catch you all later. Zoop out.